All right, so I'm in Isaiah chapter 14 here. And so I'm just going to start reading, and then I'll let the Holy Spirit take over. Amen. And I'll let you know what this whole thing is about. Amen. It says right here, it says, In the place of the dead, there is excitement over your arrival. The spirits of the world, leaders, and mighty kings long dead stand up to see you. With one voice they cry out, Now you are as weak as we are. Your might and power were buried with you. The sound of the harp in your palace has ceased. Now maggots are your sheet and worms are your blanket. How you are falling from the heaven. O shining star, son of the morning, you have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroy the nations of the world. Then it says here, it says, For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will proceed on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. Instead, you will be brought down to the place of the dead, down to its lowest depths. Now, what does this all mean? The devil used to work in the kingdom of God, for God. But because of his rebellion, his rebellion right here says, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne. The devil is trying to set his throne above God's stars. And I will proceed on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. You see, the devil tried to be like God. But because of his rebellion, he got tossed out of the kingdom of God. I'm going to show something else to you right here. It says, the serpent was the scrutest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day, he, that's the devil, he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the gardens in the, any of the trees in the garden? Of course, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. The woman replied, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it. And you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Now, I want to concentrate on this just a little bit you remember the previous chapter that i read in isaiah chapter 14 the devil tried to exalt himself on high above god now the devil is trying to exalt eve he says you will be like god look it says god knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it even though god forbid it and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. I want you to truly understand this. The devil tried to exalt himself. He got tossed out of heaven. And now, he's still trying to exalt himself. But he's trying to exalt himself with you. He's trying to say that you can exalt yourself too. You will be like God, knowing, knowing both good and evil. Let me tell you something. That... Just because you go to church and you say, yeah, I love the Lord, I love Jesus, and you have tears coming out of your eyes, does not mean that you love God every single day. Exalt God every single day. Lift up the name of Jesus Christ every single day. One day is not going to do it. Because you can love God on Sunday and then lift yourselves up and lift your way up six days a week. Because the devil has convinced you and deceived you that Hey, it's all right to exalt yourself and God will just agree with it. You see, the devil doesn't come out in the open 
and just say, I'm going to deceive you. I'm going to bring deception to your mind. He doesn't say that. He doesn't do that. He's very cunning. He's very tricky. He'll use people. He'll use groups of people. He'll use a whole audience that's cheering for themselves, exalting themselves. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. You see how many people are at football stadiums and in front of TVs cheering football players on? You see how many people are watching ESPN, cheering all these basketball players, exalting them on high, talking about them all the time. Now me, I watch football, but I don't lift up the teams. I hope they win, but I'm not cheering for them. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm not getting all mad when they lose. I'm like, oh, okay, they lost. But if it's affecting you so much that you feel that, well, if your team loses or if this program, this program that you were in, it closes down or something that you felt lifted you up closes down and you feel like you're dead or you feel like you're mad or you're angry, then that thing you place it as an idol. You place it as an idol. You place your team as an idol. You place that program as an idol. You felt it gave you life instead of putting God as giving you life. See, God never dies. God is forever lasting. Jesus, Jesus is forever lasting. So when you rely on things, when you rely on a certain program, when you rely on a certain church building, when you rely on certain people, and then they go away or they pass away, and next thing you know, you feel sad. You just feel so sad. You feel that you can't live without them. That means you didn't depend on God. You didn't depend on the, you didn't depend on the spirit of God. Instead, you relied on the things of the world. All right, because you felt that those things of the world exalted you because the devil wanted to exalt you in the things of the world. You felt that you knew good and evil, all right? And you got convinced by the devil, okay? When she saw that the tree was beautiful. Oh, she saw that the program was beautiful. She saw that way of living beautiful. And its fruit looked delicious. Its fruit looked delicious. But that fruit didn't give her everlasting life. And she wanted the wisdom it would give her. Let me tell you something. The scriptures, the word of God, will give you wisdom for your life. Nothing else. This is why me personally, this is just me personally, this is why I don't read Christian books because I don't want to be led astray. I don't know what... Other books they have that, as far as that author, I don't know what other books they have on their bookshelf. I don't know what they studied in their past that they're trying to put in their Christian book. I don't know what they what they're putting in it, and then they're deceiving the reader, thinking that Jesus agrees with certain ways of Hinduism, that or Buddhism or the law of attraction that they don't really call it that. They just say, well, we'll include it in the Bible. Jesus. Jesus agreed with a little bit of, you know, talking to the universe. Jesus agreed with a little bit of speaking things into life without actually going to God to see if God actually agrees with it. I'm going to dig a little bit into that. Let me dig into that. If someone says that you are to speak things into life, we understand that we are to speak life. That's speak the word of God to someone. All right, because it opens up their eyes. The word of God opens up people's eyes. But if you're saying, I want to speak things into existence, then you're speaking things into existence without God. You're speaking things into existence without the agreement and without the decision making and the counseling of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people like to say, well, you're built in God's image saying, no, God is our heavenly father. He's our father. So our father is to decide these things, whether these things are good for our lives or not. Okay. Like, I don't know where people get this teaching from. Maybe they got it from man, but God, God told me that he, he's my heavenly father and he decides, he decides what's good for me. Not me. I'm just an adult that's living in this world, walking in this world. And I come to God and say, Lord, is this right for me? Is this good for me? Let me go ahead and turn to second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. So we had the devil trying to exalt himself on high. He got tossed down to earth and then he tried to exalt us, tried to exalt Eve. But now he's going to exalt the Antichrist. Okay. And I just want to let you know that since the devil tried to exalt Eve and saying, oh, yeah, you can be like God. 
I just want to let you know that this has been happening over the generations, generations, and generations. And now, it's coming up to this time right now. I'm going to go ahead and start reading. It says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and how we will be gathered to meet him. Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Don't believe them, even if they claim to have had a spiritual vision, a revelation, or a letter supposedly from us. Don't be fooled by what they say, for that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God. A great rebellion against God. If you exalt yourself, you're rebelling against God. That means you're on the side of the devil. Because the devil tries to exalt himself and he rebelled against God. And if you believe that exalting you, exalting your image is the things and the ways of God, then you're dead wrong. You have to come to God humbly and he lifts us up in honor. Let me continue reading. And it says, and the man of lawlessness is revealed as the Antichrist, the one who brings destruction. He will exalt, lift himself up and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. OK, so the Antichrist is going to exalt himself and he's not going to believe in any religion. All right. Defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. And then it says, he will even sit at the temple of God, claiming that he himself is God. That sounds familiar, right? That sounds familiar. The devil tried to claim, tried to exalt himself and claim that he is God while he was working in the kingdom of God. And now he's going to exalt the Antichrist. And the Antichrist is going to claim that he is God himself as well. And it says, don't you remember what I told you about all this when I was with you? And you know that what is holding him back for he can be revealed only when his time has come. When his time comes for this lawlessness is already at work secretly and it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. You see. This kind of thinking, exalting yourself, that's lawlessness. If you exalt yourself, that's lawlessness because you're not exalting God. You're not lifting up God. You may honor God at church. Check this out. We may honor God at church. But if we honor ourselves every single day, we exalt ourselves every single day. And we believe that God agrees with our ways. And that's lawlessness. And that is the work that is secretly in our minds and in our hearts all right so if you have if you go to a church or if you go encounter people who exalt themselves on high exalt their image on high then that's a secret working that's working in them and they don't even know it they may say that they love the lord but they're still working in lawlessness now i'm not saying christian is supposed to go against christian but go against the ways of how they're thinking. Like, hey, listen, you're exalting yourself. What's up with that? Why are you always taking pictures of yourself on Facebook? Well, every single day. And, and it's just a facial picture. Like, what's going on there? You're exalting your, your flesh? I mean, yeah, you look beautiful yesterday. Why you got to take another picture? Now, some people are going to say, well, you're jealous. You're jealousy. No. Don't exalt just your, your flesh. Exalt God. Don't exalt your image that the world has given you. Exalt God. Don't exalt, check this out. Don't exalt the ways of your mommy and your daddy. You know, them using foul language or them making fun of people or them spreading rumors or them spreading secrets about people. Don't exalt their ways. Exalt God every day. Every day. Because I tell you what, what's the first law in the law of Moses? Love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. So that means going to him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. If you love your husband or your wife with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, then you will always go to him, go to them to see what they think about your decision-making. You will see, you know, what do you think? What do you think? 
Honey, what do you think? The same thing with God. Lord, what do you think about this? Do you think I should invest in this business? Lord, do you think I should invest in this store? Lord, do you think I should carry bitterness against these Democrats or these Republicans? Instead of going to the ways of your family that always votes Democrat or always votes Republican. Let me continue here. It's getting very dark here. Here. Then the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, will be revealed, but the Lord Jesus will kill him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. This man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. You see that? Let me tell you something. The devil works in churches too. The devil may be saying, okay, I'm going to bring healing to this person. Power, counterfeit power and signs and miracles. The devil can also work these things too. D did you know that? Let me let me ask you a question. If a man came into office and says that medical is free, if you go to get a procedure at the hospital, if you go ahead and do treatment, cancer treatments, then it's all going to be free. No more taxes. If your house is more than 30 years old, we'll go ahead and build you a new house for free. And while you're transitioning from how, from one from the old house to the new house, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hook you up with a hotel, three meals a day. Would you vote for that person? People would say that's a miracle. We need to vote for that man. He says no taxes, zero taxes, free medical, all the treatments and all the procedures are absolutely free. Then we need to vote for that person. Is that a miracle? Yes, it is. Is that a sign? Yes, it is. Be careful. Be very careful. We are to cling to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me continue reading. It says he will use every kind of evil deception. Evil deception. Now, how are we going to know what's evil if we don't study the word of God? Amen. Evil deception. Remember, he says deception, which means it's going to be cunning. It's going to be tricky. Deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. The truth is right here. This is the truth. All of this. All of it. Okay? That's the truth. So if you're not studying this diligently every single day, then you just might be caught up in a few lies or one big, huge lie. Thinking about well, if I exalt myself and if I exalt my image, God agrees with it because I'm successful in my image. Let me continue reading. It says, so God will cause them to be greatly deceived and they will believe these lies. Did you see that? So God will cause them to be greatly deceived. God is going to send a great delusion to everyone, to the church and also to the people of the world. And it's entirely up to you if you want to believe the truth that can save you or believe the deception. God is going to see if you're faithful to his son. God is going to see if you truly loved his word. God is going to see if you truly lived in the Holy Spirit. And if you were truly faithful to him. To see if you truly loved him. And then it says, then they will be condemned for enjoying evil rather than believing the truth. Enjoying evil, not putting God first. If you don't put God first, then that's evil. If you don't love God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind every single day, then you're going to practice evil. Because that's where evil started. Because you didn't put God first. You didn't love God first. All right? Rather than believing the truth. All right? So... That's all I want to show you guys. I'm going to make a second part as far as revealing um, the devil exalting himself and the devil trying to exalt us, trying to continue to exalt himself and exalt us. And also, he's going to exalt the Antichrist. And also, we're also going to come into agreement with the Antichrist because remember, the devil tried to exalt himself. The devil is trying to exalt us without God. Saying you can be like God without God. And he's going to exalt the Antichrist. So you have exalt, exalt, exalt. 
They're all on the same team. And that's how, that's how the world and even a lot of Christians are going to agree with the ways of the Antichrist. Because it's all about you. And it's all about your ways. And it's all about your image. And it's all about what you can get. Even people that say, yeah, I love the Lord. Yeah, I love the Lord. Be careful of who you listen to. Be careful of what you're allowing into your life. Amen. That's all I got to say, guys. I just want to say I love you. Jesus first, God first, and may the kingdom always come first. Stay blessed in the Holy Spirit. Amen.